Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic Second Nature. Long ago, science established the fact that animal organs and tissues isolated from the whole organism can be maintained in a living state. If you're a wild animal, there's a very high chance another animal thinks you look like a snack. When faced with imminent death, most animals' fight or flight instinct kicks in. But some animals have evolved to simply turn into a gross carcass. This is apparent death. The experiment begins. The heart is stopped. The dog is dead. Thanatosis, or apparent death, is named after the Greek god of death and is usually a last-ditch survival strategy for when everything else has failed. After 10 to 12 days, the dog returns to its normal state. After the experiment, dogs live for years, they grow, they put on weight, and have families. Even the largest and most dangerous animals are vulnerable to predators at some point in their lives. And for animals that can't outrun or fight off their attackers, playing dead has become a surprisingly effective defense strategy. The most accomplished of these actors are so good at it that the nickname for the concept has been named after them, the opossum. These American marsupials bank on their predator's natural instinct to avoid rotten food. When threatened, the opossum starts salivating and releases a nauseating substance out of its anal glands that smells like a decaying carcass. It doesn't make them poisonous to predators, but it does make them lose their appetites. Releasing stinky gases and substances is a crucial part of the process, and this technique has evolved convergently in many mammals, reptiles, and insects. So stinky baby, you're just going to have to learn to stay inside. You wouldn't want to be dead, would you? Though the stinkiest of them all is a little desert beetle. The blue death feigning beetle's very unoriginal name is a testament to their acting prowess. They live in the Sonoran Desert, an environment with hundreds of predators. Luckily for them, many predators, such as spiders, are only interested in their juicy insides. By playing dead and stinking like an old dead bug, they trick the predators into thinking they've been dead for a while and have dried out. And nobody likes dry food in the desert. Thanatosis works better against predators that take their prey back to their nest. This buys the prey time and gives them the opportunity to escape later on. A good example of this is snakes. Thanatosis occurs in several snake families and can be effective against both birds of prey and mammals. When touched by a predator, they contort themselves like a gangster dying in an 80s action movie and then lay still. This western hog nose thought it was being real slick when doing this terrible acting job. <laughs> You're tearing me apart, Lisa! We have to cut them some slack though, they're not consciously acting dead. Thanatosis is thought to be an involuntary fear response, where the animal gets so scared that it passes out and sometimes empties the contents of its bowels. Hey, we've all been there. There is always waste to get rid of when your engine uses the food you eat for fuel. Good toilet practices means getting rid of the waste at the right times in the right ways. Domesticated animals usually have their fear responses bred out of them, but you can still see remnants of it in chickens. Hypnotizing chickens has been a common pastime for kids and farms all over the world. You draw a line in front of a chicken and their fear response gets triggered, immobilizing the chicken. <laughs> The record for longest chicken hypnosis is 3 hours and 47 minutes. Not every fear response is triggered by a predator. In some cases, the mere sight of a stranger can knock an animal out. This is an anthill. 
In fact, it's an ant city and a good-sized one. You see, ants are what we call social insects. They live in communities. In the ant world, war is an everyday occurrence. Fire ants, in particular, are notoriously territorial, and when they encounter neighbors from other colonies, it's on like Donkey Kong. Young workers play dead, while older workers go into full fighting mode. The young have softer exoskeletons and don't do well in jaw-to-jaw -jaw combat, so by playing dead, they make their enemies focus on the older warriors. Though it's not exactly the same, some animals feign death not to avoid predators, but to attract prey. This is a form of aggressive mimicry. Sleeper cichlidfish from Lake Malawi have elevated their play acting into a hunting strategy. When on the prowl, the fish pretends to be dead and sinks down the water column. Their skin is patchy and seemingly rotten and attracts smaller fish to take a bite of this free meal. But if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. When they're in range, the cichlid wakes up and gobbles the smaller fish up. Finally, we have my favorite form of death feigning, performed by the brush-footed butterfly, and they are absolute queens. By the way, do you know how to tell a butterfly from a moth? Females of several species get to choose who to mate with, and they can mate multiple times, which leads to constant attention from males. Butter bros will approach the females when they're relaxing on a leaf or just having a drink of water. If females are not interested, they move to another leaf, and the males usually get the hint. But if they don't, and keep harassing them, the females play dead and drop down all the way to the ground as if struck by lightning. Sounds like a great exit strategy for awkward social situations. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine adult butterflies chilling out on the table, playing dead. So what should I talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya. and sometimes releases the contents of its bowels. Hey, we've all been there. Sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> what? Freaking Google over here doesn't have any bowels. Sorry, I didn't understand. Okay, Google, stop. <laughs> Nebs, don't knock that over. Oh God. Shit! Ugh! <sighs>